Kudish? Yep. Okay, perfect. What, what did you think it was? Uh, it was either Kudish or, Q, you know. That's what? okay. I cannot tell you how often my name is, is misspelled. Really? Oh, yeah. What's the, like, wildest The wildest? That really? You, you want to know the wildest yes. misspelling of my name? <laughs> I did a show called Bells Are Ringing on Broadway with my friend Faith Prince. And um, I got a call from a buddy of mine. And he was like, dude your name is above the title in lights. And I was like, yeah, they told us that they were going to do that. It was Faith Prince and Mark Kudish in. And, you know, it's the first time I've ever had that kind of billing before in my career. And he was like, dude, they totally misspelled it. <laughs> and I was like, how? I said, don't even tell me how they spelled it. Really? He's like, dude, it is so wrong. <laughs> and so I was like, all right. He's like, are you going to call your agent? And I said, nope. I'm going to let it be there. A week later, my agent calls me and says, Mark, did you know your name was in lights? And I said, yep. Did you know it was misspelled? And I said, yep. <laughs> How long have you known? A week? OK. I just wanted that information. Thanks. Five minutes later, a call from the producer, Mark. Did you know that your name was up? Yes. Did you know your name was misspelled? Yes. Well, why didn't you tell us? Not my job. Well, your agent is saying that we owe you money because your name was misspelled. And I said, well, I guess you do then. And he was like, I said, I'm sorry, y'all signed the contract with me. You couldn't have looked at the contract to make sure? You guys are the ones that drew the contract. You couldn't look at it? I'm your host, Laura Filipov, and today we'll be going over a new segment called the Solo Spotlight, where we welcome anyone in the film world into the spotlight. Today we had the pleasure of welcoming Mark Kudish on the show, an actor best known for his musical theater appearances on Broadway. He's been nominated for Tony Awards for his roles in 9 to 5 in 2009, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in 2005, and Thoroughly Modern Millie in 2002. So, stay tuned, grab a snack, and enjoy the show. What's the most valuable thing you've learned on a film set or a Broadway show? Not to take yourself too seriously. Okay. Straight up. Man, you gotta have a sense of humor. Because they're grueling environments. Like, it's not glamorous. The work is not glamorous. Mm -hmm. uh, film is hurry up and wait. You're sitting around most of the time. Get, mind you, depending on where you are on the call sheet and everything, if you know, you're in the first 10 on that call sheet, you're, you're being treated really well. You have a very nice, what they call a honey wagon, that's waiting for you. Um, if you know, when you're going to shoot your, your scene or whatever, you'll do a rehearsal and then they bring in team two. And you get to go sit and have a drink or have whatever, and there's a second unit. And those people look enough like you that they can light the scene and get the scene in order so that it's ready for when they want to bring you guys back to actually shoot it. So you're treated very well, but you're still working 14 hours a day. And for a lot of people, it's grueling. It's really, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, if you have family, it can be really tough. Now, it's a cakewalk compared to the theater <laughs> because you're expected to do everything in theater and no one's standing in for you or you know, may, you know, being you while it's being lit. That's on you, you're up there and you're doing you know, a three weeks to a month of 12 hour days of rehearsals and then you go into your previews and you're rehearsing during the day and you're doing the show at night. You're doing eight shows a week. So you're just, for two months, you don't have a life anymore. And then the minute that the show opens, 
you're already looking for your other jobs and you're working on other things during the day while you're doing your eight shows a week at night. And what people don't understand about the theater is it's live every night. So that performance is happening presently every night. We're athletes, we're racehorses. Like we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're like baseball players on their schedule of 150 plus games a season. Except we don't have a season, we just do it every week of the year. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, you know, but then every night you're in front of an audience who's never seen the thing before. Mm -hmm. And you're offering them a unique experience. And it's the first night every night if you're aware and present to it. Yeah. I mean, that sounds very intense. What was the longest show you've... The longest, the longest run of running anything show. that I ever did yeah. was Beauty and the Beast. Okay. I was the, uh, the second guy to um, play Gaston. And um, I went into the show very early on, actually, because the minute they opened the Broadway company, Disney then wanted to open the L.A. company very soon after that. So it was all ready. And they never stopped working on the show. So I did beauty for two and a half years, but I had a good relationship with Disney in that they would let me out to go shoot a film here or go shoot a film there, or then I had another show that was trying out of town for Broadway. And they let me go and actually work on that. And then when that moved in, that's when I left the show. Mm -hmm. um, but I won't stay in a show now any longer than a year. I just, um, I can't. Yeah. And you mentioned Gaston. Uh, what was your favorite role that you've played so far? I have a lot of them. Yeah. I've played, I've mostly created new pieces. So for your generation, for <laughs> instance, do you know the show Thoroughly Modern Millie? I do not. What? Sorry. You don't know that show? <laughs> no. Oh my God. Dude. Um, oh, there we are. Y'all know what Thoroughly Modern Millie is. I know you do. Um, there's a cup, there's a show called Thoroughly Modern Millie uh, okay. where I played the boss, and that's become a part of the icon of, of, of Broadway theater. Yeah. Um, I just finished doing a Broadway show called. Um, Girl from the North Country, which was really more a play with music by an Irish playwright named Connor McPherson, and I love the piece. It was incredible. I just uh, opened a brand new opera called Trade that I love, and we're going out to Los Angeles Opera to do it in April. Um, I mean, I've done great plays, and, and, and I've created, I've, I don't have a favorite. I have a, a I don't want to call it a type, but a certain character that I, I look to play. And what is that? Would that be? I like, like to an play antagonist? complicated men. Yeah. In complicated <laughs> situations. So more often than not, I'm not the guy you like. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy that makes you uneasy. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, those are those have the most depth. So I well, like them too. What I think about those characters and I think about the theater in general, really is that they're the ones that make you think. They're the ones that get you off your center, that put you in a space where you have to be present and discover. Um, I'm not that interested in making people happy. Um, I'm not, but I am interested in engaging people in a way that makes them think outside their box. Yeah. And nowadays, given where we are, and that we live in an age of social media, where everyone can be the hero of their bubble, it's really nice to get people present in a space where there is a community of people that have gathered together to witness an event together and be present together. Like, we really lost that, and, and the pandemic made that even worse, right? Yeah. And, you know, yay for social media, but at the same time, Boo for social media. Yeah. What advice would you give for aspiring actors watching the show? Here's advice that I give to anybody. You don't have to okay. be an actor, right? Yeah. Here's advice I give to you. Okay. One day at a time. Stay out of here. Be here. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Screw the five year plan. Think about that five-year plan right before the pandemic. Where'd that get you? Hmm. Nowhere. Yeah. One day at a time. Enjoy where you are. Be grateful. Take in 
all of the positive things that you have in the moment. There are always going to be challenges. Challenges are great too. And just see what happens tomorrow. Have ideas, have plans, have aspiration, no doubt. But have patience with yourself. Have faith, whatever that means to you. Breathe. Yeah. That's the best advice I'd give anybody. Yeah. Because you can't control it. You just can't. Yeah. No matter how much your parents try to tell you that too, they can't. That's why they're telling you that. Yeah. You know, and like everybody's journey is their own. So you can't compare yourself to your friend. You can't compare yourself to a brother or a sister. You can't compare yourself to what your, 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 your parents may have accomplished or aspired to. Everybody's got their own journey to take. And isn't it nice to be on that journey? Yeah. Yeah. I know I've definitely fell victim to thinking too much ahead, but. But you know, everybody does. Look, Yeah. here's the truth about life. Every person that is living, breathing, and walking is a writer. You are a writer. You are a writer of a book of fiction right here, every minute of every day. You are scribbling in that novel in your head, and you are the hero of that novel for sure. But how many people are actually reading it? No one but you. And it is a book of fiction. So put the book down. You can pick it up later, see what happens, see what's happening here, see what's happening now. And then whatever you get from that moment of here and now, see how that affects that book. That's everybody. I don't care how old you are. Mm -hmm. I'm old. That is what I have learned. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's was very, very helpful, I'm sure, for all the viewers and everyone. Thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you. And that's the show. If you want to see more people in the spotlight, don't forget to tune into Flix this summer. Happy watching. Woo!